Good morning, New Beginning Church family and our online family and friends. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you so much for joining us this morning for our church service. Psalm 95, 3 through 7 says, For the Lord is a great God, a great King above all gods. He holds in his hands the depth of the earth and the highest mountains. The sea belongs to him, for he made it. His hands form the dry land too. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God. We are the people he watches over, the flock under his care. If only you will listen to his voice today. We just read for you Psalm 95, 3 through 7. We're going to sing two songs this morning. What a mighty God we serve, and there is none like you, because we know God is mightier than this pandemic. my heart like 
in your grace. We thank you for a chance to come before you again. Lord, we glorify you. We magnify you. We lift you, Father God, for you are worthy of all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Lord, we realize that you are holy and we are unholy. We realize, Father God, that you are just and we are unjust. We realize, God, that you are merciful and we are unmerciful. Lord, we thank you for accepting us in your sight. We pray that you bless us now and keep us now. Bless our lives, Father God, that our lives will keep rolling on just a little while longer. That we will tell men and women, boys and girls, that Jesus is real. And for him we live. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless your word on today. That your word will go forward. That our lives will be made the better. And that people will know you in a very real way. It's in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. There is none like our God. He is the awesome and he is the amazing God. And there is none like him. There is none like our God. He is the awesome and the amazing God. God. Let me thank our maestro, our choir leader, our choir member on today, Sister Carolyn Jean Davis. Why don't you thank God for her? Why don't we give her a hand and thank her for being a part of our service on today. We thank her so much for, for continuing to do God's will in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of illnesses. Let me call your attention to Isaiah chapter 26. Today we will cover the first three verses of Isaiah chapter 26. And we'll be back here again uh, if the Lord says so. Isaiah chapter 26 verses 1 through 3. Isaiah chapter 26 verses 1 through 3. Uh, in the Old Testament, the book is Isaiah. Uh, the chapter is 26. The verses are one through three. Amen. We thank God for another chance to meet at our remote location, and we bless the name of God for giving us a, another chance just to broadcast on the airways and along uh, the online platforms. Isaiah chapter 26, when you found it, you will discover these words. In that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. God will appoint salvation for walls and bulwark. Open the gates that the righteous nation which keep the truth may enter in. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. My subject for the day is the God of perfect peace. The God of perfect peace. Throughout the world in which we live, the entire world at this stage, men, women, boys, and girls are looking for perfect peace. They are looking for 
an opportunity to really have peace. Peace is calmness. Peace is tranquility. Peace is the ability to have a inward rest regardless of what's going on around you. Yes, peace is the, is the ability to have joy in the midst of everything that's going on around us. We all know today, we all know that there are some troubling times with us and there are some troubling times ahead of us. We even know that there are some troubling times that's in our past. When we look at the text, these who are Jews, these of the, the nation of Judah, find themselves in a bad situation. They find themselves looking forward to the Messiah coming to rescue them. They, like us today, are looking for just a little glimmer of hope. They are looking for somebody to come along to make their lives the better. As we look today, we find ourselves in situations where life is not what it used to be. We can't really commune together. We cannot fellowship together. We, if we're wise, we want to even go get our hair done together. We're at a time that we've never seen before in our lives, and we have leadership like we've never seen or never heard of. You see, our nation decided years ago, centuries ago, that she did not want a king. But we have before us today someone who believed that he has ultimate authority. He believes he's a king. I want to say to you today that God has the last word. God has the last say so. And God has a way of blessing us. So we might as well go ahead now and start singing our song. You ought to have a song in your heart. You ought to have a melody in your heart. You ought to have a tune in your heart that you can get through the tough times of today. You see... The senior saints back home would sing a tune while they were scrubbing the floors. They would sing a tune while they were sweeping the porch. They would sing a tune while they were kneeling the dough. They would sing a tune because the tune that they sung unto the Lord always kept peace in their heart. Today, as we look for, at those from the nation of Judah, they are just like those of our four parents. In the midst of all the captivity, in the midst of all of the opposition, they found hope in the Lord. Let me tell you, if you, if you can't find hope today, if you can't find peace today, if you can't find rest today, if you cannot find tranquility today, you need to look to the Lord. God himself, God himself is able to keep us in the midst of our situation. Look at verse number one, Isaiah chapter 26, verse number one. We're just going to deal with three of those verses today and address the fact that we serve the God of perfect peace. We serve the God who keeps us in spite of us. He, he's able to keep us when we can't keep ourselves. You see, I told the church a long time ago that sooner or later, God is going to speak and he's going to speak loudly and clearly and our president will be able to do nothing about it. I told the church throughout the last three to four years that when God speaks, the whole world is going to see him speak. I don't proclaim myself to be a prophet or anything, but I do know that God has been long-suffering with these great United States of America. 
And I know that if he is a just God, he will not suffer those who are righteous to suffer very long. We find ourselves in a pandemic. We find ourselves in a situation where medical professions don't have the answer. Where the legislature does not have the answer. Where kings, queens, and, and those who are in a high position do not have the answer. Let me just tell you, only God has the answer. We are in unprecedented situations so much so until churches are closed. Stores are closed. Places are closed that we never would dream of. And, and now they're saying to us, go ahead and go to the bowling hall. Go ahead and go to the beauticians in the barber shop. Go ahead and go to stores that, that you uh, have been demanding that come that should be open during this season. I say to you and I appeal to you today, go, don't go anywhere until the social clubs begin to open. Until the racquetball clubs begin to open. Don't get out there until until the, the, the social clubs where, where they have social hour on a regular basis begin to open. Simply because God has protected us, especially here in the city of Houston. Amen. God has protected us, and he's yet on the throne. When we look at the text, we find in Isaiah chapter 22, verse number 1, the, the, the writer says, the writer says that we're going to sing a song one day. And not only should we sing a song one day, we ought to be singing a song of happiness today. You see, when we sing a song, it says to us that we, we, we have hope in the midst of hopeless situations. Amen. Whenever we vow to sing a song, we understand that we have hope that's right around the corner. You see, hope, one has defined hope as faith standing on its tiptoes, looking over the horizon to see what the God that we serve is going to bring to be. We thank God that God has given us hope. We have to maintain hope. As we read our word, we need to know that this word offers us hope. You see, Judah practiced idolatry for a while. God sent Judah into Babylonian captivity. However, God is the one that restored them. God is the one that set them straight. You see, the God that we serve has always been a merciful God. Amen. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, God made a way back to him. He always created a way for us to get back to him. Even though he was disappointed, even though they had sinned, God always made a way for man to get back to him. Therefore, as we read this chapter in Isaiah chapter 26, God gives Judah an opportunity to come back to them. And to him, he says to them, whatever you do, whatever you do, always acknowledge that I am God. Amen. See, even though the nation was in trouble, God accepted individuals who wanted to do the right thing and the individuals who were for the right thing. What I'm saying to you this morning, regardless of how bad our nation may be, we have to understand that the God we serve will hear our individual cries. And we can be restored back to him one person at a time because he's such a great God. He's such a merciful God. He's such a dependable God until he will take us as we come back to him. Amen. People around us may be doing the wrong thing. People around us may be acting crazy. People around us may have turned their backs against God. But God has created an avenue by which we can get back to him individually. We must trust in the work of God. We must trust in the history of God. God is looking forward to us coming back to him in such a way that we forget about our past, that we conclude that we have a brighter future. That is what's going on in chapter 20, 26 of Isaiah. They realize that as they sing a song, the millennium is coming one day. 
They were looking forward to the great millennium when they have a king that's coming, when they have a Messiah that's coming that will lift them from where they are and defend them from the evil doers. It says, in that day we will sing with the song of Judah, we will sing these words in a song. We are a strong city. Let me tell you, Houston, Houston, Houston always say that we are a strong city and whenever danger hit, we all stick together and that's well and good and that's true. But the fact of the matter is, if we are not with God, we, our city is not going to be strong. Thank God for the mayor calling a prayer and find having enough a religion in him, having enough God in him to call a citywide prayer where men, women, boys, and girls can call on the almighty God because we know we can't do it by ourselves. The, they said they said that they, we have a strong city. God has appointed salvation in our city and he has appointed walls and bulwark in our city. What he's saying here is that God has created salvation. God has created a mechanism by which we can get back to God and God can get back to us. God has blessed us in such a way that we need to understand that God is able to keep us when we can't keep ourselves. We need to understand that God has given us a strong city. He has given us a fortified city. He has given us a city that, that never sleeps nor slumber because God himself doesn't sleep nor slumber. He is the God that is a mighty God. He has offered us boldness and security. Amen. This word strong means that God has given us power. If we have strength, if we have might, if we have power, it must come from God. I'm talking about the God of perfect peace, the God who, who keeps us in. He keeps us in spite of us. He offers us his security in this city. God will appoint salvation. Salvation is deliverance. Salvation is, is, is protection. Salvation is welfare. Salvation is victory. Salvation is deliverance to the point where we are saved. Let me tell you, you need to be born again. You need to be saved. You need to know Jesus in, in the department of your sin. You need to know that Jesus is the one who can save you. These ones says in the text that, that God can protect us. He will offer us salvation. He will offer us what we need. We need deliverance. In the midst of our oppression, I just want to say to you, don't let $1,200 change your heart. Don't, don't let another stimulus package change your desire. God is trying to send us somebody who will pull us out. And it's not Democratic. It's not Republican. His name is Jesus. His name is not on the ballot, and we ought not write him in on the ballot because God used people in the land. He, he used people who had, he had placed here to bless us. He placed here these people to bless us. He placed people that, that can bless us regardless of what we're going through. In Isaiah chapter 26, verse 1 and 2, it talks about the fact that we are a strong city. We have the walls and we have the bulwarks. This word bulwarks in, in the Hebrew means that, that this is this word is kale. This word kale means that, that we have God's protection. It is a rampart. It is a fortress. It, it, is a, it is a trench. It is a wall that God has put up for our protection. God has placed a wall for our protection. Those who love him, those who are, are protected by him, those who have given their lives to him, God has a bulwark for us, and he will protect us, regardless of what goes on behind, behind closed doors, behind the scene. God is working behind the scene, as well as those who are oppressing us are working behind the scene. Verse 2, it says, open the gate. 
Open up the gates of blessing. Open, open up the gate to the land of this new city. Open up the gates that, that we can be blessed. He says, open, open the gates that the righteous nation which keep truth may enter in. God, God is looking for a nation that will that will obey him. God is looking for a nation that will stand beside him. God is looking for a nation who will believe in him. God is looking for an entire nation that will trust him regardless of what's on the scene. If it's a virus, God wants you to trust him. If it's an oppressor, God wants him to, you to trust him. If it's somebody that's mistreating you, trust God in the midst of it. Too often we depend on physical weapons. We need to depend on God. It's not by our might. It's not by our strength. But it's by the spirit of God that we are protected. When doctors are confused, when men give foolish advice, <laughs> God is yet on the throne. We have to put our trust in him. We have to put our trust in him. The Bible says right here in verse number two that the righteous nation which keep trust may enter in. You see, there is, there is a peace. There is a rest. The Hebrew writer talks about there's a rest that we must enter in. There, there's a rest that we must enter in. There's a tranquility regardless of what goes on around you, whether it's sickness, whether it's death, whether it's destitute, we have to enter into the rest of Jesus Christ and allow him to walk with us. So if things are going bad for you right now, there's hope in Jesus. There's hope in God. The, the writer says here that the righteous nation which keep truth will enter in. The reverse is as true. Those who are not righteous can't enter into this rest. Those who don't love the Lord, those who have not given to the, themselves to the Lord, they can't enter in. We have to understand that God has appointed salvation. He has given us an opportunity to enter in. He has given us the opportunity to enter in as we are lawful. This word righteous in the Hebrew means lawful, the just one. It means a just man. The reason why it means a just man is because the nation can be wrong, but God honors the just. <laughs> the entire nation can be going in the wrong direction, but if you walk with God, God will honor your walk with him. This is an opportunity for us to sing a new song. This is an opportunity for us to walk from day to day loving the Lord and being righteous and just before the Lord. And God will set up a wall of protection around us. If we reason this thing out, we can come to one conclusion. That if, if we're going to be protected, it's going to be God who protects us. If we're going to walk right, and if we're going to live right, we need to live right and walk right according to God, because God is the one who protects us. God is the one who keeps us. God is the one who makes us who we are. God is the one who is going to bear us up in times of storm. We are in a great warfare right now, and we think we're just in a medical warfare. We're in the midst of a spiritual warfare, and God is the only one who can win in this warfare. Verse number two says, verse number three declares, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. The psalmist is singing this song. He's singing unto the Lord. I like this psalmist because he's not singing to the people. He's not singing to the folk. He's not singing to the church members. He is singing unto the Lord. I like this psalmist because it gives me encouragement that when I sing, I don't have to sing for other people. I have to just sing unto the Lord. 
Dr. Rose got it right the other day. I don't know if he was making an excuse for him or making an excuse for me when he said, when I sing unto the Lord, number one, I'm not singing to you. I'm singing unto the Lord. I'm singing unto the Lord. And when I'm singing unto the Lord, I don't have to sing from a standpoint that you have to be pleased. I'm singing unto the Lord that the Lord will hear me, that the Lord will hear my cry, that the Lord will be pleased with what I offer him. So I'm offering my song unto the Lord. So first of all, I'm singing to the Lord. Secondly, I am singing as I am pleased unto the Lord, and I'm letting the Lord know what I feel deep down within. Yes. The third thing, when I sing unto the Lord, I'm not singing to you, I'm singing unto him. And then when I sing unto the Lord, I understand one thing well, and that is I'm only giving back to God what God has given unto me. When we get beyond ourselves, when we take ourselves out of the way, then we can glorify God in such a way that God himself will be pleased with us. The text says, you will keep him. The text doesn't say that you will keep them. The text declares that you will keep him. You will keep me. You have to make this thing with God personal. Yeah, he's my personal God. He, yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He's my personal God. As I move from day to day, he walks with me, regardless of what the nation is doing, regardless of what, what the nation leader is doing, regardless of what the state leader is doing, or regardless of what the city leader is doing. I walk with God. God walks with me. He says that he will keep me in perfect peace. He will keep me in complete peace. He will keep me with soundness. He will keep me even in my body. He will keep me in my healing. When the doctor has a bad report, God is the only one who can overrule the doctor. He is a great physician. He's the one that keeps us regardless of what goes on around us. He will keep us in perfect peace. He will guard us. This word, this word, this, this, this word keep means that God will secure us. God will guard us. God will, will bless us. God will watch over us. God will mark us. And when he marks us, he will mark us as secure and safe. He is God. He's our protector. There's no greater protector than God himself. There's no greater keeper than God himself. He will preserve us because he treasures us. Look at the text. The text says you will keep us in perfect peace. You will keep me in perfect peace if my mind is stayed on you. You see, we got to keep our minds on him. We got to keep our hearts on him. He will keep us in perfect peace, complete peace. He will keep us in perfect peace in such a way that things that others worry about, we don't have to worry about. The statement is made, if you're going to worry, don't pray. If you're going to pray, don't worry. God has a way of keeping us in perfect peace. His word mind means our work. Our imagination. All that we go through, God is able to keep us in perfect peace. This word, this, this, this word means that even in our intellect, God keeps us. In our sick times, God keeps us. In our good times, God keeps us. Please deliver me, God, from those who think they got it, those who think they have arrived, those who think that things are going well for them. Lord, have mercy on them. Because if God doesn't keep you, you cannot keep yourself. The author here is painting a picture of man when it talks about us being in perfect peace, when it talks about a God keeping us in perfect peace. The, the author is painting a picture of pottery. And you know, Jeremiah says that, that we, are, we are clay in the hands of God. And God shapes us and, and molds us. And, and God is able to keep us. Let me tell you, 
you. The reason why we are who we are is because God has kept us and God has molded us. We don't have any bragging rights. We don't have any reason to brag whatsoever. It's only because God is molding us. God is shaping us. And God is blessing us. God has a way of blessing us in spite of ourselves. God just keeps right on blessing us. He's blessing us so that we can come on back home. He's blessing us and he's telling us, I'm continuing to walk with you and all the other foolishness that we are doing and have done, he's willing to forgive us for it because he is the one who keeps us yes. secure in our minds, in our imagination. God keeps us if we keep our minds stayed. This word stayed means to lean <laughs> This word stays mean to rest. This word stays mean to, to be set on God. Let me tell you, you need to be set on God, regardless of what your neighbor said. Set your affections on God. Regardless of the, of the prognosis, regardless of the diagnosis, set your affections on on God. Set it on God. When you set your affections on God, you realize that stuff is going on all around you, but God is able to keep you in the middle of the storm. Yes. You see, we are folk that, that read the Bible and we are people who believe the Bible, and but we, we seem to skip over some things in the Bible for our own desires. We can quote Mark chapter 4 where the disciples were on the sea and the storm came up and Jesus walked on water. Jesus woke up, rather, and he said, peace be still. You see, we want Jesus, yeah, we want Jesus to always make the waves and the noise quiet down. We want Jesus to shut the storm down. But let me tell you, sometimes, 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 Jesus chooses not to shut the storm down, but sometimes he quiets his child in the storm. God has a way, Jesus has a way of quieting us in the midst of the storm. He has a way of giving us peace in the midst of the storm. That's why the songwriter says that if this storm of life keep right on blowing, if, the, if this thing keep going the way that it's going, if, if this thing never lets up, I'm going to trust in Jesus and Jesus alone. Amen. Songwriter says, my soul is anchored. My soul is anchored in the Lord. My soul is anchored in the Lord. My soul is anchored in the Lord. Regardless of what goes on around me, regardless of how strong the storm becomes, he's calming me on the inside. Yes. Let me just say to you, my dears, we don't control the storm, but God does. And it will be good if God shuts down every storm in our lives. It will be a good thing for us if God would just, just make the waves just hush it would be good if, if, if the water would lay down and sleep like a baby like we wanted to do. But sometimes, sometimes God let the storm keep brewing. Sometimes God let the storm keep getting out of control. Sometimes God let people get out of control. Sometimes our loved ones will not trust God. But God has given us inward peace yes. in the midst of the storm. I say to you today, my dears, that if you're going through a storm, let God give you inward peace. If you're going through something, let God give you inward peace. If, you, if you're having trouble with somebody, let God give you inward peace because the, the writer says here, he gives peace to those whose mind is stayed on Jesus. Whose mind is stayed on Jesus because they trust him. Yeah, when we look at those from Judah in that nation who's going through troubles time, it is also applied to us today when we're going through trouble situations. You got to trust God to pull you out. You got to trust God. Now, now we have choices in the matter. We can try to do it on our own. But we've already tried that. We tried to make it on our own. We we tried to declare that we can do it on our own. We tried to argue that I'm gonna be able to make it on my own. But we have not done anything but messed it up. We tried her. We thought she would make a difference. We we thought just one more woman could make it happen, but she has failed. 
We tried him. We tried him. And because we knew that he was a man, we knew all we needed was another man. And this man could make it happen. And he has failed. And some of you have tried them, him, she, her, and all of them. You tried all of them. But let me just tell you, until you try God, until you stick with him, and until you trust him, the storm will keep on raging. And if this storm keeps raging in my life, I realize that my soul is anchored. My soul is anchored in the Lord. I'm talking about the God of perfect peace. The God of complete peace. The God of complete rest. The God of complete tranquility. The God of completeness. He is the God of perfect peace. How you know he's perfect? I know he's perfect because my life has not always been the way it is now. Because I've had some storms in my life. My life has been messed up. I have been torn up from the floor. I have been messed up from the floor. But God has blessed me from the guttermost to the uttermost. Amen. He's kept me. Well, how did he do it? He took his son over 2,000 years ago. Even before I was born, he, he took his son and he, he paid the cost for me over 2,000 years ago. My Lord and my God, Jesus Christ died on a skull hill called Calvary. My Lord, my God, Jesus Christ gave up the ghost over 2,000 years ago. He paid the price for me. He paid the price for my peace. He created a wall. He created a wall. He created a wall where protection and safety secures me. And because I'm saved, because I'm born again, because I believe the story, there is nothing and no one who can turn me away from heaven now. Jesus has paid the price for me. Jesus did it with a, on a skull hill called Calvary over 2,000 years ago. He died, I tell you. They took my Lord, an innocent man, my God, an innocent man died for those of us who are guilty. I was guilty as charged. I am not righteous. I am not just. But Jesus has counted it righteousness for my sake. Yes. Now he has imputed righteousness just for me. He died over 2,000 years ago. He died on a skull hill called Calvary. Mean men took my Lord and they, they marched him from judgment hall to judgment hall. My Lord, my God, Jesus Christ. They whipped him. They beat him. They pulled plugs out of his body. He bled, I tell you, for you and for me. They, they, they killed him on a skull hill called Calvary. He died for you and he died for me. They took him off the cross that day. They laid him in a barber tomb. It was a barber tomb. It was Joseph's brand new tomb. It was a tomb that had never been laid in by any man. It was Joseph's brand new tomb. They laid him in a, a barber tomb that day. But early that third day morning, bright and early that third day morning, before the rooster could crow, early that third day morning, before Pilate could change the gods, early that third day morning, before Peter and John got into a foot race to the sepulchre, he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. Before the women could anoint his body, he got up with all power. Jesus got up with all power in heaven and earth. In his hand. He died for you and he died for me. He rose early that third day morning to set us right with God. When he died, he reached up and caught the, the hand of God, a, a, a sinless hand of God. He reached up and caught the hand of God, reached down and caught the hand of man and brought a bitter dispute to a happy ending. Jesus, the God-man, Jesus, the man of God, Jesus reached us because he was the only one who was fit to reach us. And if you're listening to me today, let me tell you, you need to try Jesus. Amen. Whether you have peace or have no peace, you need to try Jesus. Whether the nation is going in a direction that you wanted to go in or not, you need to try Jesus in order to have peace. Amen. I said to you already that regardless of the direction the nation is going in, God has made it possible 
for us to individually trust him as our savior, as our salvation, as our defense, as our support. We need to trust Jesus. God has made a way for us. And he has made a way out of no way. We were on our way to hell. And when Jesus died on Calvary, the veil of the temple was rent from top to bottom. The veil was rent. That veil that the priest used to go behind. The veil that, that, that people, people had to plead our case. The holy men would have to plead our case behind. The veil of the temple was rent from top to bottom. Now we don't have to depend on the priest to go behind the veil for us. We don't have to depend to go behind the veil for us. We can go boldly behind the veil and plead our case for ourselves. Amen. We can go before God for ourselves. The veil has been torn down, torn up, has collapsed. We can plead our cases for ourselves. The door of the church is open. I'm talking about the God of peace. He is the one who can give us peace in time of storm. And I know and God knows that we need peace today in the time of a storm. We are going through a storm right now. We're going through a storm that, that just won't let up. It just won't quit. But we have to individually trust Jesus as our Savior. We must trust him for ourselves. We must believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And out of obedience unto God, he gave his life as a ransom for you and me. He died over 2,000 years ago. He paid the cost for you. Will you come to Jesus? Come to him just as you are. I had to come just as I was. I was messed up too. But Jesus gave me an opportunity to come to him, to be saved to take the journey from earth to heaven. I offer that same invitation to you today. The door of the church is open. If you would, just bow your head with me, repeat after me, and invite Jesus into your life by telling the Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. Now come into my life. and make me a new person. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Thank you for saving my soul. Thank you for making me whole. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. If you prayed that prayer and trusted Jesus as your Savior, we believe that you are born again. You're on your way to heaven. You have the safety of Jesus the Christ. And if you're here today and you're in between church homes or you don't have a church home, I recommend this one, the New Beginning Church, where Jesus is the Son of God, where Jesus is the leader, where Jesus is the commander, where Jesus is the main attraction and the center of attention. I recommend that you join the New Beginning Church. You can do so by live broadcast. You can do so online. Just send me a message. Let me know that you are now, you've now made the decision to join the New Beginning Church. And God is, is, is watching. And God is pleased in what you are doing. If foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, these are their homes. God wants every person to have a church home. I recommend this one. And if you need prayer, send me a message. We'll be praying with you and we'll be praying for you. God bless you and keep you is our prayer. We thank God for this privilege, this moment to come to you in your homes, in your cars, 
by broadcast. We thank God for that. And let me just tell you, as you've been expecting, it is offering time. It is offering time. It is it is offering time. It is time to give unto the Lord. It is time to give unto the Lord. It is time to give unto the Lord. It is time to give unto the Lord Jesus Christ. As you can see on your screen, you can give by two means. You can give to the New Beginning Church. As we're in this pandemic, it is still your responsibility as a child of God or a prospective child of God to give to the Lord. If the church doors are not open physically, they are open electronically. And God wants you to continue to fellowship with him financially. You see, tithes and offerings, especially for the New Beginning Church members, tithes and offerings are not just for the ongoing of ministry, but tithes and offering is your very best unto the Lord. And as God has, has created a financial opportunity for you, you can give by way of cash app, or you can give by mailing your offerings to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Don't think, don't think because the church is not open physically that you are to hold on to what God has blessed you with. And I want to thank those who have been kind enough to mail in their tithes and offerings. And those of you who have been sending your tithes and offering by way of the cash app. You've been a blessing to our ministry. You've been a blessing to our services. You've been a blessing to the ongoing support of God's kingdom. And we want to just say thank you. Thank you for being a part of our services. Thank you for, for watching over God's finances. And we're going to get through this. And these finances will come back even stronger than ever. But you cannot afford to stop giving to the Lord through tithes, offering, and even sacrificial gifts. These are tough times. People need some things. I say to you, if you're going to get it, you need to get it from the Lord. And the way to continue to give it from the Lord is to continue to give to the Lord. As you, as you know, we are, we are having... Sunday school, Bible study, and church worship service by way of live broadcast. And we have been blessed of the Lord where our, our children have online Sunday school by Kahoot. Our adults have Sunday school at 9 a.m. by Facebook Live. And we come to you every Sunday at 10.45 a.m. for our worship service electronically. Also, we have at 7.20 p.m. Bible study online, 7.20 p.m. Please join us for our service and allow God to continue to bless you as you... Uh, contribute to this ministry and as God continue to be a blessing to you. Thank you so much for joining us again and thank you for being a part of our service. We want to continue to pray for Sister Carolyn Davis, my wife. She is scheduled this Wednesday for surgery. We want to pray that God blesses in a mighty way. We want to pray that God blesses her to be pain free. That God blesses the doctors, the nurses, the attendants. That God will be a blessing to her. And as she goes forth, she will be a blessing to those in the hospital. We'll ask God to lead everybody that will come in contact with her and keep her safe. We want to pray for her heart and her mind during these times. We ask her to come and let's let's go to the Lord in, in prayer. Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for this, my wife, our sister, Sister Carolyn Davis. 
Now, Lord, she's on her way to the hospital. We pray for your protection, your guidance, your instruction. We pray for your mercy. We pray for you to watch over her, watch over the doctors. We pray for you to watch over the nurses, the atmosphere, that there will be no, nothing that will hinder her healed, healing. We pray for a healing even right now, that the doctors will be amazed, that her life will be changed, and that you will speak to us, Lord Jesus, that even this situation will bring others close to you and that they will trust in you, that you will be their wall, that you will be their bulwarks, that you, Father God, will keep her in perfect peace as we keep our minds stayed on Jesus. Lord, we trust you. We believe that you are the great physician and we know that you've never lost a patient. Bless now. Into your hands, we, can, we commend our entire desires and we believe you, Lord, to be the author and the finisher of our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Amen. We thank God for who he is and what he's already done. We thank God for what he is doing and what he has done in our lives. We thank God for this, another chance, another opportunity to come before you and to be a part of what's going on in your life. We're going to get through it. And we're going to get through it with God. Look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Let us go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you now for who you are and for what you do. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Him, the only wise and only true God. Unto him be glory, be majesty. Until Jesus comes again, let us join by saying, amen. Amen. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Be blessed.